Hi, I am John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. I'm glad you're back. Today is, especially because today is going to be a fun, fun show. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more interactive than usual. Uh, as you all know, I'm in the comments section quite a bit on almost all of my videos. I take the time to do that uh, just to get a little bit personal with you and to let you know that, yeah, I am listening. And yeah, you know, the, the direction of the channel has taken some you know, slight changes based on some of the input that you all have given me. And I want to be giving you the best that I can and the best information as possible. And along those lines, there's been a lot of teaching on my channel. So 350 videos or so at this point and a lot of teaching. So I hope you're getting a lot out of it. And in the course of that teaching, I've been asked more than once, what would I have changed if I could go back? If I could talk to myself as a younger me, what would I change? as a younger bodybuilder, and how I believe it could have changed the course or advanced my own personal bodybuilding. And so I'm going to give you those three, my top three. And I also want, here's the interactive part, I want you to give me your top three down there in the comments section. I'd love to hear. There's no big, no little, no right, no wrong answers. They're just your answers. And I do want to hear them, okay? But before I get to mine, I'm going to do a little house cleaning today. In lieu of not having any particular sponsors on this one show today, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the moment and sh share with you a few of my books. This is Mr. America Hearts, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. America's Shape Up series. And this is a book that I wrote uh, just detailing what I did in the course of a little over a year to go from out of shape to in shape. And so this is a fun one for those of you who are interested in, you know, maybe some of the more advanced of you who want to hear or see some of the a uh, little bit of really smart and then perhaps some of the little bit of crazy at the time uh, that I did in the course of a year. So that was a fun read with progression pictures and things like that along the way. Mr. America Shape Up series. My second one that I wrote, I'm giving them all three to you right now in succession, is Physique 101. And this one in particular is the most popular one that I've written thus far. Uh, there have been more downloads of this book, more paperback copies bought of this book than uh, any other, and it's my best written work, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, and I also did the cover art on it as well, the front and the back, so it's kind of a cool thing that I like uh, or I'm happy with at this point. So Physique 101. This one is pretty much covering everything from uh, a little bit past beginner all the way to advanced, giving you routines. All of these books have pictures, by the way, but this gives routines, it gives how to adjust your diet, and pictures of exercises, all the way with descriptions from beginning to end. And then lastly, in 2020, uh, during the, uh, let's just say in 2020, right? You all know what time of year that was. Uh, I had plenty of time on my hands, and I went ahead and I wrote, for you beginners out there, year one in the beginning. And this one, uh, while it's not been as popular, I have to tell you, there's some really good information in here, the most updated information out of all of my books, and it really is one that I would love to have every one of you guys, if you're not a beginner, I would love to see you give it to your kids, okay, year one in the beginning. This one in particular is probably one of the best works that I've written, uh, or I should say one of the ones I'm really happy with because uh, it's great for beginners and I can help the youth, the youth the youths that are out there, uh, to really progress. And you'll see in a moment why that one in particular gets me right here when I give you my three reasons, okay? So moving on now. Oh, by the way, you can get all three of those books. You can get the download on my website, MrAmericaHeart.com. Uh, I'll put the link down below in the video description. Uh, you can get downloads right there off of my website, or you can go ahead and pick yourself up a paperback like the ones I just showed you, and those are on Amazon. All you have to do is search my name, John Hart, H-E-A-R-T, and just type in either Physique 101 or Year One in the Beginning or Mr. America's Shape Up Series, and it'll come right up. And it's about 20 bucks or so for those books. All right. My three reasons, my three things that I would change if I could go back, okay? If I could, if I could. So I started out using, in my training, when I first started working out, I had just been exposed to the 1979 Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane won, 
Mike Menser took second, and uh, Boyer Co. took third. That year in particular, my uncle took me to a Boyer Co. seminar at Bath Beach Bodybuilding in Brooklyn. I'm originally from New York. And <clears throat> when we went, I was handed on the way out of there a free copy of Muscle Builder at the time of switching to muscle and fitness. And on the cover was Frank Zane with Christine Zane. That magazine in particular had some amazing articles in it. And in particular, Mike Menser caught my eye because not just my eye, but my brain, because his ideas on training, not just having taken second in the Mr. Olympia. I, I, to be honest with you, his physique was not something that I, you know, uh, uh, you know, thought I would you know, look, want to look like or look like, I should say. It just was different than mine. Uh, so I didn't really relate to it. But it was the ideas, the training ideas that he had that really, really jumped out at me. So I immediately started training after that seminar. Uh, I got uh, copies of his training uh, manuals from him, and then I studied them. And then after studying them, I realized that was the way to go. So I went ahead with my brother. Uh, he and I both, my brother's just a year and a half younger than me. Uh, he and I both trained together in heavy-duty, high-intensity training fashion. And it was the type of heavy-duty training that Mike was putting out in his manuals at the time. One to two sets of each exercise, very high-intensity, four reps, negatives. And I put on 25 pounds of muscle. That was pretty good. Over the course of three years, I was 25 pounds of lean muscle tissue heavier. And it seemed like that was the answer. So what do I regret about this? Not yet, not yet, not yet. So at that point in time, three years into it, I moved to Southern California. And in moving by myself or with uh, my roommate at the time, I moved to Southern California just to take advantage of that. We wanted to be near the bodybuilding, okay? the bodybuilding, the mecca of bodybuilding, Gold's Gym, World Gym, all of that. And in doing so, I got a little stupid in my head. I shouldn't say that just yet, but I, I went off the path a little bit and spent you know a good two or three years somewhere in that zone using higher volume training, the training of the day, okay, which was at that time three on, one off. Lee Haney was Mr. Olympia, and his training routine was the most popular one going. So we trained three on, one off. And that type of training uh, was very challenging to me uh, with a little bit more volume. I, I could never tolerate two or three sets of an exercise for very long, but uh, three sets was just unbearable to me. Uh, two sets was difficult. Uh, so it, my number one, number one thing I would change I would not have spent so much time with higher volume training. And that, I believe, I, I gave it way too much time. So if it was two and a half, three years, I could have called it at one if I was more mature. I wasn't mature enough. I got caught in the trap of going to the gym often. I got caught in the trap of it was part social life for me. And so I loved the gym. I know a bunch of you guys love the gym, but at what cost? I know for a fact I was burning myself out. I know for a fact that while I gained 25 pounds in the course of the first three years of my training, I only, over the next two and a half or three years, I only put on four or five pounds. I mean, that kind of sucks, you know? So mathematically, those numbers are terrible. So I know that now in looking back, and that's why I say Mm, I wouldn't give it that much time. So my number one thing is, is I wouldn't have given the higher volume. I can't even call it high volume. I was never a five sets per exercise guy. But my version of higher volume training, I would have given it much less time okay, than I did. That's my number one thing I would have changed. My number two thing, um, this one I feel very strongly about. I would have copied or emulated the most driven person that I could find in my field or in my endeavor or my heart's desire. Okay. At the time, you know, coming up in my 20s and in my 30s, it was just bodybuilding. It was straight up bodybuilding. It doesn't matter what my career was, doesn't matter what I was doing for a living, doesn't matter 
you know, who I was involved with, what girl I was involved with. It, it, just my, the, the number one thing that was always looming in the back of my mind was my bodybuilding. And that uh, I would have, just for the fact that I was not as driven, I had some good genetics, you know, perhaps not great, but I realized in watching guys like Rich Gasperi during those years, uh, he was chasing down Lee Haney. He was beating everybody in sight. He was amazing, okay? I don't think he gets any credit to this day at, at, like he should. He was amazing. And he had it up here. He was driven. And he drove himself to probably reach his potential. And so I feel very strongly that that type of mentality is necessary, whether you're talking about bodybuilding or any endeavor that you choose to do. And I had the benefit at the time of having a friend of mine who to this day I'm friends with, and you know he's more of a big brother to me now uh, than ever before. And I did have the privilege of having him train me or help me when I competed and I won my class at the Natural Mr. Universe in 2001. And then he also kept an eye on me and helped me with my posing and helped me, you know, to make sure I was on track when I was training for the Mr. America. A couple times I did that. Won my class in 2012. I won the overall, my class and overall in 2013. Uh, you know, he was the guy that was there with me. But by that time, as an older man, I was more mature and driven. I had learned how to put goals in front of me and achieve the goals. But I could have saved myself a lot of time if I just would have followed Steve Ballinger's example. Steve Ballinger is his name. And Steve Ballinger uh, was a local competitor in Southern California. He qualified for the Nationals multiple times, but never went. And uh, I, I really, really, you know, his, his attitude towards training and diet was, he came in ripped every single time at every show with as much muscle as he could. He pushed his genetics as far as he could. And I trained with him. I know what a driven machine he was in the gym. And while it was fun training with him, you know, I can't honestly say that I gave it everything that I had during those years that I trained with him. And that part, everything that I had to the diet, to the posing, uh, to the preparation in general. And that part, uh, you know, I can look back and say, I do regret. And I wish that I would have, if I could go back, I wish I would have taken his example, you know, literally, literally put myself under his wing and said, brother, please show me, you know, how to, how to do what you do. And, you know, he loves me enough. Honestly, I know he would have done it if I just would have been humble enough to ask, but I never did. And so that would be my number two. Uh, I know I could have saved myself a lot of time and probably achieved my goals much sooner. Uh, you know, in natural bodybuilding, it advanced so much from, from the 90s into the 2000s that I know that if I would have competed in natural bodybuilding, uh, some of the contests that I did in the 2000s, just 10 years earlier, uh, I know I could have gone even further. And that part, you know, we all look back and we can all say, shoulda, woulda, coulda, okay? <laughs> that part, well, that'll always go with me now, okay? I know I could have done better. And with Steve's help, uh, I know it could, at a younger stage, uh, I know I could have done even better. So that one is my number two. My number three is, um, man, I moved from New York at 21, 22 to Southern California because of the bodybuilding. And, you know, it, it, I stayed too long in Southern California. Uh, I, I don't like Southern California in particular. Uh, I, I used to, when I was younger, I did like New York. And I do like New York City for what it is. Uh, however, I live in Texas now. And to me, my third thing that I would have changed is I would have moved to Texas much sooner. I had the opportunity and way back, it was 1996, 1995, 1997, somewhere in there. And I, I would have done it then if I could go back. I would have moved to Texas at that point in time because uh, the bodybuilding culture here is great. Number one, it's really, really great. Uh, probably, uh, you know, one, two in our nation. Uh, that's 
it's going strong. And of course, with Ronnie Coleman, of course, you know, the greatest of all time, eight time Mr. Olympia, being right in uh, Arlington, Texas, over at Metroflex, he was, you know, a heavy influence on the bodybuilding culture here in Texas. And it's spread, it's all over. And so that part, you know, I wish I would have moved to Texas much, much sooner. Southern California is a, while it's a blessing on, one, on the one hand, the weather is very nice. That's about the nicest thing that everybody says about it. And that I would agree with. It's pretty consistent. So the weather is nice. Uh, past that point, it's kind of a trap. And some of you all know me and some of you all know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go <laughs> down the road of certain things having to deal with California and Southern California in particular. But uh, some of you all know uh, that, that, that and, and don't expect me to say this part, which is, you know me, but you don't expect this part, which is uh, the trap being that there's a complacency when you, when you live in Southern California. It's kind of fake in a way because you think that, you know, that situation you're in is going to go on forever. That, you know, you're young, you know, you're good looking or whatever. You have your youth, your health and all of that. And you're going to Gold's Gym. I was going to Gold's Gym. I was going to World Gym. I was working at both eventually as a trainer. And these are the most famous spots in the entire world. And I was around movie stars. I was around actors. I was around, around uh, athletes. I was around the top bodybuilders in the world that would come and visit. Uh, and then the ones who lived there, of course. So I had the benefit of all of those things. It was kind of fun. But it was a trap because uh, all of that fun distracted me so much from going after my personal goals. And that part, I would have wanted to move much sooner. I spent 32 years there, and mm, that's too many. 32 or 35, somewhere in there. And it's just too many. I wouldn't have done that. 33? Something like that. Anyway, uh, I would have gone to Texas much sooner. And I had friends down here, and boy, when the opportunity was there, I hemmed, I hawed. Business was really good. I was training people, making a grip of cash. And you know what? It, again, the lure, the, the, it was a very deceitful, you know, in my view, uh, uh, lifestyle. Okay. And that it's just really the cost of living shot up quite a bit out there and everything changed, you know. So anyway, I would have gone to Texas that much sooner because. I'm finding it to be, uh, for me, my heart's desire. It's, it's everything that I hoped that it would be. And I've visited here many times prior to moving here. So it's awesome. To me, it's the best state in this entire country. I've been all around the country. Um, no disrespect meant to the other you know, 49 or 50 states. Okay, <laughs> So those are my three things that I would have changed if I could have regarding my bodybuilding and how I believe it could have made it better in the long run. I believe I would have advanced much quicker if I would have just done all three of those things much sooner in my career. And now, you know, I find myself in my late 50s. I'm very happy with my accomplishments. However, the thought of they could have been more, you know, is there. And it's because of those three reasons I just gave you. And so uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm looking forward to your comments down in the comments section down below. Please give me your best. Think about it before you write, okay? And go ahead and give me your best. What three things would you change? If you could go back that you believe would make your bodybuilding that much better. I can give you some suggestions on what could have, but I'm not going to answer the question for you. So down below, I'll read them all. Don't worry. All right, listen, before I go off to my left, you're going to see that disc pop up next to my head. That is the subscribe button for this channel, Mr. America Heart. If you give that thing a tap, YouTube will just let you know when the newest videos pop up that I pump out. And then down below, off to your left, you're going to see the thumbs up button. That thumbs up button lets the YouTube algorithm know how much you're loving this channel and that it should be promoting this channel that much more. And I really appreciate that from my heart to you. I'll see you next time. John Hart.